the rate of technological advancement in recent times has been taking some really crazy turns recently, leading to the release of software and gadgets that you could only imagine in sci-fi movies. And things are about to get a lot crazier with the supposed discovery of the LK99 superconductors that can work at room temperature. And what exactly is the LK99 superconductor? The LK99 is an interesting new technology that was made public some time ago by some researchers from the Quantum Energy Research Center in South Korea. And if successful, these will be more than worthy replacements for the conductors that power most devices that are available now. To make this clearer, the conductors that power most devices that we use today get to generate a lot of heat when electricity passes through them. This is the basic reason why most high-performing devices need cooling fans for optimal operation and also the reason your mobile devices heat up when used for a while. But with this new proposed technology, we can be able to do a lot more without having to face some of these difficulties that slow down our operation. They're expected to perform a lot better than whatever we have today. And in case it's not yet clear to you, this will be a very major change in the world of technology. I won't be wrong to say that it will be an overhaul of the whole way we're used to operating right now. The benefits that will be drawn from this are very much widespread and will definitely cover every aspect of our lives, considering how much we've integrated technology into our daily lives. And if what we're hearing about the LK99 turns out to be true, it will be crazy to imagine how this will change our lives when made to run side by side with the already insane additions to AI that we now have. The possibilities will be limitless at some point. One of the clear benefits we'll be expecting is in the transportation department. And I think the rail transport system will stand to benefit a lot from this advancement. You know how the contact with the rail lines gets to generate a lot of vibration on the trains due to the friction and all that? Well, this will be a thing of the past if we eventually adopt this technology. And what we're talking about here is the possibility of levitating trains. Already, there are maglev trains being developed around the world that depend on superconductors that run on the repulsion feature of magnets. And you'll find this already being developed in countries like Japan. But these already existing superconductors that power these levitating trains have some really major shortcomings that limit their potential. For one, it's very expensive to run and maintain, as the superconductors require cryogenic cooling of up to negative 273 degrees Celsius and have a very limited range. Well, with a superconductor like the LK99 that can run at room temperature, we're looking at very advanced tech being widely spread because they'll become really affordable. And make no mistake, such an affordable power source will be revolutionary at this point, given that we require a lot of computing power these days to help with the switch to AI that we're on at the moment. Having a train that levitates means that the lag caused by friction on the rail lines becomes not just reduced, but totally eliminated if the LK99 turns out to be what they say it is, as it's meant to offer zero resistance. This will significantly reduce the traveling time and also eliminate the risks due to derailment that occurs as a result of contact with the rails. Also, this will mean that certain types of cars can also levitate. We're talking about a Blade Runner type of car. And since there's a move towards EVs in this age, the technology will ensure that long-lasting batteries with a light speed charging rate will be made possible. The whole idea is just insane and will change our perception of life. If successful, this technology is bound to aid the goals for greener and more efficient energy. And power conservation is very much at the forefront if we're ever to reach that point. The excess energy from the sun that's required for solar power can be captured and preserved more efficiently. And this will mean having even batteries that will be able to last a lot longer and even recharge faster. And with this type of tech adopted, we're looking at cheaper medical care too. And beyond that, super powerful computers are expected to become more commonplace with the operation and access to its features being instant. No lag from any form is expected. So now you understand when I say that this will be a major shift in the way we live and these Korean scientists will have their names written in stone if the LK99 eventually turns out to do everything they expect it to do. And because I haven't mentioned it before, 
Seung Woo Lee, a professor of physics at Seoul National University, and Seung Yan Kim, a postdoctoral researcher at the Korea Institute of Science and Technology, are the two people that released their research on this project sometime in 2022. And since it's easy to replicate the experiment, which is in fact the main reason this technology will make everything a whole lot cheaper than they are now, many other scientists and labs have immersed themselves in confirming the claims that have been brought forward by these two scientists. The revelation was initially met with some doubts by people who are familiar with superconductors, given that the known ones are far from possibly operating at such temperatures as proposed by this duo, and the alternative will be operating under super high pressure that won't be just ideal for any practical use. And to add to that, they agree that superconductors will remarkably reduce resistance, but it won't be zero resistance as they claim. Hopping on the trend to validate the claim of the LK99, a team of researchers affiliated with the Huazhong University of Science and Technology in China published a paper on the preprint server RZIV claiming to have successfully achieved the same synthesis of the LK99 crystal as the two Korean scientists. And to back this claim, they captured its magnetic levitation on video as evidence. This development escalated the excitement surrounding the recent news of the discovery of the new superconducting material because of the possibilities this will open to us. And other scientists validating claims this way is actually what is needed if any credibility is to be given to such discoveries. The abstract of that paper captures the confirmation and the content reads, Recently, Suk Bay Lee et al. reported inspiring experimental findings on the atmospheric superconductivity of the modified lead apatite crystal, or LK99, at room temperature. They claimed that the synthesized LK99 materials exhibit the Meissner levitation phenomenon of superconductors and have a superconducting transition temperature higher than 400 Kelvin. Here, for the first time, we successfully verify and synthesize the LK99 crystals, which can be magnetically levitated with larger levitated angle than Suk Bay Lee's sample at room temperature. It's expected to realize the true potential of room temperature non-contact superconducting magnetic levitation in near future. If we're to go by this, they actually achieved better results than earlier stated by the original scientists. These are really interesting times, and I really hope we get to make this a success, as it will help make living in this age a lot more affordable. Now, the Chinese team's findings were based on a sample of LK99 that they synthesized using a similar method to that described by the Korean team. As I said before, it's a process that's easy to replicate, and they were able to achieve magnetic levitation of the sample at room temperature and standard pressure, and they also measured a zero resistance in this sample, as opposed to the doubts that people in the field showed initially. The Chinese team's findings are good for this discovery as support for the existence of the LK99 as a room temperature superconductor. However, it's important to note that their findings have not yet been peer-reviewed. This means that we'll be seeing a whole lot more digging being done with respect to this to make sure that firstly, it lives up to expectations, and secondly, that they're safe to run. So they should be interpreted with caution. As you would expect, in addition to the Chinese team, another team of researchers from the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab in the United States has also published a paper on RZIV in this regard. They're claiming to have successfully replicated the synthesis of LK99. However, they've come up with a variation from the others, as this team didn't observe magnetic levitation or zero resistance in their samples. However, this discrepancy between the findings of the Chinese team and the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab team is still being evaluated to know what the issue is for an informed comparison that will help drive a conclusion. It's possible that the different results could be attributed to the slight differences between the Chinese team's samples and that of the team from the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. It's also possible that the Chinese team's samples were synthesized using a different method that was more conductive to superconductivity. Either way, there's still a possibility that the whole thing isn't as initially projected. Further research will help to reconcile the discrepancy between the findings of the two teams. However, the findings of both teams provide strong evidence that LK99 is a promising new superconducting material, which will aid in the advancements that's already playing out. All in all, we're at a time that's already redefining the way technology is made and operated, which is really great for general productivity and ease of access. Be sure I'll keep you updated on new developments on this, so do keep in touch with the channel for more updates.